recording right here. Yay, people are raising their hands. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> um, we've got a really big group today, and I'd love to know where all of you are watching from, and special props if you're watching from Massachusetts, because that's where I live. So let me know. I'm going to see the chat. Ooh, Montana, Georgia, Oakland, Delaware, California, Maine, um, Cape Cod, Mexico City. Wow. Oh my gosh. Charlotte, Toronto. Wow. Washington, D.C. I see a lot of Georgia, a lot of New York, a lot of Pennsylvania, St. Louis, Albuquerque, Michigan. Wow. We've really got an international, international group here. Miami. Um, oh, be careful in Miami. San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and a sneaking in a reminder to fill out the census for 2020 if you haven't. That's very important. You should fill out your census. Kentucky, suburbs of DC, California. Um, I love it. Charlotte, North Carolina. Thanks so much. I'm so excited that everyone is here today. We've got a lot to cover. So we're going to get started. And I actually have a co-host here, and I will find her in a moment and make her panelist. Um, somebody from Charity How To. So I'm not going to keep my video on the whole time, but I just wanted to say hi. And if you don't know who I am, I just want to assure you that you're in the right place. You're signed up for the GoFundMe webinar about how to set up the donation button. I almost said donation sticker, but it's not Instagram. The donate button on your website and how to really get started and how to build a really effective donate page, landing page for your website using GoFundMe charity. So here's a little bit about me. I've been working in the sector for longer than I care to admit, and it's actually my birthday today. And I'm celebrating 10 years in business for myself. I've been a development director. I've been a marketing director. I've been all things considered and you know duties as assigned. And I know that a lot of you are working in really small shops. You're doing all the things. And I also know that your time and your attention are the only two non-renewable resources that we have. So I'm not going to take too much more to, of your time. Malia Robertson is joining me today. She's the charity service specialist at GoFundMe Charity. Um, and she's been working with small and large organizations. She is your techni technical go-to for all your technical questions. And I'm so excited to have her here. Um, and she's usually at the dog beach with her fur baby Daisy. So that's awesome. So I'm hoping to go to the beach a little bit later today. It's really, really nice out. Okay. So let me stop my video just because I feel like it's a little bit distracting. Thank you all for the birthday wishes. It's been wonderful so far. Um, and you know, hopefully we will get to go to the beach later. That'll be really nice. So we're going to go through an introduction to crowdfunding, like what it is and why we're talking about it and why it's important. And then we'll talk about how to set up the donate button on your website. We'll go through examples um, and elements of an effective donation page. Then we'll talk about ways to grow your supporter base and follow up with donors after they make their first time gift and then help and resources as we, as we go along. So the difference, this is a question that I actually, um, that I get all the time. I get this question, you know, what is the difference between GoFundMe and GoFundMe Charity? And the real difference is that GoFundMe Charity has features specifically designed for charities to raise more money. You get access to the donor data, no subscriptions or commitments. So this is really the big difference and it's a different website. It's charity.gofundme. Dot com if you're not already using it. GoFundMe Charity is based on the idea that crowdfunding is one of the most powerful ways to raise funds for a specific cause or project. And the way it's done is by asking a large number of people to donate money, usually in smaller amounts, um, and in a relatively short period of time. So a dedicated um, a dedicated time period of two weeks or a month rather than just your annual fund or your general um, donation fund. Um, so that's really the specific definition of crowdfunding and organizations, businesses, individuals, we all can use crowdfunding. 
So does it work? Well, what GoFundMe has found is that social fundraising does work and it's incredibly powerful. So 95% of NPOs, that's nonprofit organizations, agree that social media shares, which is sharing about your fundraising campaign, or maybe you made a donation to a fundraising campaign, is effective and will increase the number of donations. And what they found, one in five donations shared on social media by donors results in a new donation, which I think is amazing. So we'll talk a little bit about how to spread the word and how to get people to spread the word about your fundraising campaign, about your donate button. But I wanted to give you some statistics as a background. And this is what makes the GoFundMe charity platform in particular so powerful is that all of these social sharing features are built right in. So you can see this is a crowdfunding campaign. If you just did a regular crowdfunding campaign on GoFundMe charity, there's the donate button. You have the opportunity to ask people to start their own fundraisers for you. You can do your branding. And then there's these social sharing, the Facebook sharing, Twitter sharing, email sharing. And that really increases the power and amplifies what you're able to do. And it's all mobile optimized. And as we know, that's hugely important. We're spending so much more time now on our phones and your phone is the first thing you see in the morning, first thing you see at night. Every single thing you do needs to be optimized for mobile. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Setting up the donate button, creating this frictionless donation experience for your supporters because we're used to frictionless. We're used to ordering food on Grubhub and having it come in an hour. We're used to ordering something on Amazon with one swipe. We're used to pulling up something on Netflix in two clicks. So we are used to frictionless stuff in our consumer driven world and nonprofits need to pay attention to this because we really don't have much, pa we don't have a lot of patience for cumbersome, clunky, hard to use donation experiences. People just don't. And a good, actually a really good um, test for you that I always do with my clients before I even start working with them. I encourage them to go and donate even just $5, $10 to their own organization, but try to do it on a phone and see what happens. Write down every single step that you need to take and write down how long it takes you to do it. Or if you even end up finishing it, because a lot of my clients end up, don't, they don't even end up finishing the donation process. So we're going to give you a much simpler way to connect with your donors and to drive donations today. So with the donate button, you can actually get more of the donation to your cause because GoFundMe charity does not have subscription fees and they are one of the industry leaders in payment processing fees. You can make your donors feel at home because you can design the button with your branding so it doesn't look like it's very out of place, so people feel secure, and you really can get up and running incredibly fast. It's so simple to set up. There's copy and paste code. It can be used on any website, so you can really start using it immediately. So after you've completed your payment processing setup, right? So you do have to go to GoFundMe Charity or charity.gofundme.com and set up your charity, claim your charity, set up your payment processing. And I did talk about that in a previous webinar. So if there's questions about how to do that, there is a very robust GoFundMe charity help section. And also Malia is also here on the webinar to answer some of your technical questions. So thank you so much for that. But we're gonna just kind of jump into how to add the donate button once you've already claimed your charity and you've kind of got your account set up and then how to really promote it to your followers and supporters and how to create a page around it that will work and optimize donations. So you wanna click on the profile menu, click account, click donate button, and then click create donate button. So very, very intuitive, very simple. And if you have WordPress, so most of us have WordPress websites, I would bet. Um, maybe you have something else, but if you do have a WordPress website, then you know about WordPress plugins, which are these little pieces of code you can just add 
very, very easily. You do not have to know any kind of coding. I built my whole website myself on WordPress. Not that it was simple and not that it looks the most beautiful, but the plugins help make it look more professional and more beautiful. So this is what the plugin looks like on WordPress. And you can completely customize this with your logo, customize this with your colors, customize the donation amounts. We're going to go through all of that. But if you do have WordPress, it's even more simple. It's even simpler to get this in front of the most number of people and to make it as simple as possible. So how do you customize your donate button? So this tool gives you control of both your, the button's design and the donor experience with live previews in the preview pane so it's easy to see how you're doing in real time. So the details that are required, the button name, this is where you can say give now, or you can say whatever you want, join the movement, whatever it is. I suggest putting donate on it, very simple, and people know what that means. You could try to get cheeky and clever with the wording, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Keep it simple, a lot of people know what the donate button means. So when you are calling it, um, you know, whatever you're calling it internally, make sure your call to action words, that's the button text, and that's going to be what people see. You can add your logo, which I do recommend doing so that people know they're in the right place. They know they haven't clicked off somewhere um, where they're not safe and secure. And then your brand's colors, um, you can do all of that inside this just to make people feel like it's really cohesive and consistent with your website branding with all of your other branding. So then you wanna customize the donate form, which is what your donors are going to see. This is the first page your donors will see after clicking the donate button on your website. So the headline, that's the text across the top of the form. The donation frequency, that's um, what options you wanna give your donors. So you know we recommend giving them all the options because why not? Why wouldn't you want to turn someone into a monthly donor if they want to be a monthly donor? So you can turn on all of these options. And then the donation values, um, these are the preset amounts. Now, a best practice for this, I find, is start off small. You don't want to start your preset amounts at $100. And I know we would love to have everyone that comes to our website automatically give $100, but that's the reality is it's probably just not going to happen. And some people are looking for few less amounts. I would start it either at 10, maybe 20, but 10 or 15 is the general amount for a preset amount that I think would work. And you're going to have to experiment with this. And there's really no one size fits all. Every charity is different. Then the recurring donation values, these are preset amounts um, for people that have opted to make a monthly donation, those would probably be a little bit smaller. And then donor comments. So you can choose whether or not your donors can include a comment. Um, it is enabled by default. And there, what's interesting is I think that you should enable this because it's not like they're displayed anywhere on the website, but you could get these comments. And that's going to give you valuable market research and insight into your donors and supporters. So I say, why not turn it on and why not learn more about these people that are coming to your website and donating? Okay, so step two of the donate form. This is the page where donors enter their name and email after selecting the amount that they are choosing to give. This has headline, large text across the top, Anonymous donations, you can choose whether or not. I mean, I say sure, because it's not, it's very rare that someone would choose this, but someone might want to be anonymous for whatever reason. Um, they'll never be anonymous to you, but this is only for display purposes. So once again, I think the purpose of the donation page and the purpose of these donor forms, the purpose is to knock down every potential obstacle to giving that this person might have. So this person might say, oh, well, I want to give, but I really don't want my name to show up on the page. And then they click away. So give them all of the options required, but understand that the purpose of this page is to convince them to follow through with the donation and actually pull out their credit card and then also knock down any obstacle that might be in their way. 
Okay, are you with me so far? Um, I see some Q and A's and I say happy birthday or thank you for happy birthday. <laughs> um, I see a lot happening in the chat and I know there's millions of questions. Okay, well, we'll get to questions. The best place I should say, and I didn't say it before, the best place to put your question is actually in the Q and A, the questions box, because it's a lot easier to see. The chat goes so fast. So we will do our best to answer all the questions in the chat, but the best place to put it is in the Q and A, because that's the dedicated place for it. And then we can check things off as we go and as we answer them. So I should have said that in the beginning and I, I do apologize. Okay, moving right along. Donation form step three is payment. This is the page where donors enter their credit card information to complete their payment. So once again, large text across the top of the form, donation confirmation page. If you wanna direct donors to a specific page on your website, after they complete their contribution, enter the URL here. I recommend doing that so you can create this great thank you page and thank you experience for your donors. But if you don't have a specific thank you page, um, they're gonna see a custom confirmation page and then they're gonna be redirected back just to your website. So a thank you page is just kind of a best practice. We'll talk a little bit about how to customize those pages. Finalizing your donate button. Once you're done, click create to save the button. Um, now you're ready to add it to your website. So congratulations, that's awesome. You have two options, copy and paste the full code provided to add the button to your website. If you don't have a donate button, or if you wanna replace the button you already have, then this is the option that you pick. And then you can also copy the URL only. So this option is only if you like the design of the button you already have, but you just wanna point the donate button to a different provider. So I would read this slide a couple of times, figure out, do you like the donate button you have? Maybe you had it custom made, it's custom branded, it's a custom font, and you really just wanna send people to the GoFundMe charity page, then that's fine. But if you don't have a donate button at all or you wanna replace it and you're okay replacing it, then you do option one, copy and paste the full HTML code. So that might be a little bit technical, but you'll see that when you get to the final, final stages. And you can change that also at any time. A pro tip, um, use the URL by itself as a quick and easy way to collect donations. So you can actually use the URL to your donate button and put it in tweets and put it on social media and put it in videos and put it everywhere. Um, your digital bios, you know, your bio on Instagram, your bio on Twitter, your bio on LinkedIn, and you can link it um, behind any other button or navigation item on your website. So that's just a little bit of a pro tip for you, especially customized for social media sharing. Okay, so now I wanna talk about the custom confirmation page. It's also called the thank you redirect page, right? So I make a donation. I actually give you my credit card information. I click confirm, I click donate. And then you just send me back to the homepage of your website. Okay, you know, whatever, it's fine. But you have a chance to make this really great first impression with this donor. And we have to understand we have to just go back to the fundamentals of fundraising when we're thinking about all of these tools because these tools are just that, they're tools. And if we don't have that compelling reason to give, if we don't have that cultivation funnel for our donors, if we're not taking them on a journey, the tools don't matter. The tools are just tools, but you have to understand your donors in order to truly build these relationships with them and drive even more donations. So there are two main reasons studies have shown that donors don't give again. One, they don't feel like their donation made a difference and they haven't seen meaningful communication about the impact of their gift. So to me, I think why not get off on the right foot and get the relationship started with a thoughtful and well-crafted 
thank you for donating page. And this is on your website, right? This, you have to create this on your website. So there's some examples. Thank you for being amazing. This is a very simple one. So when you donate to this particular organization, this comes up, it's showing smiling faces, it's saying thank you for being amazing, it's got a great quote. So genuinely use this page to thank the donor. You know, we could not do this work without you. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your investment. We're building something big together. I wouldn't say all of these things, but pick one that you think sounds right for you, sounds on brand for you. We're building something big together. I like this one. Our work isn't done yet, but with your help, we will be able to accomplish a lot or we have accomplished a lot. So the mo first and most important thing your thank you page should do is it should not only let your donor know that their donation went through successfully, but it should serve as a place to make a deeper connection with someone who cares about your work. So the message on the page needs to be clear, focused, and genuinely appreciative. Don't fill up this page with a million other asks or event announcements or social media links or any other clutter, right? Focus on that donor-centric language and make it incredibly simple. Video is so easy to do and so powerful. A simple and personal short video thank you on this redirect page can inspire donors to deepen their relationship with you and stay invested for the long haul. So this is a video from Dr. Hi, Without I'm Borders. Melissa Beery, originally that from Wisconsin, up. and it now working as a logistician a in Yida, South and Sudan, you can watch this when you with get Doctors the Without Borders, or MSF. But it's really Since 2011, saying, MSF has been providing Since the medical activities a for more than 50,000 refugees of Doctors here Without in Borders. Uh, we've been providing uh, water and sanitation, so vaccinations, and other this. medical activities you can put a video to support on YouTube, the population. You can embed it on your thank we you could page. not do this work without um, you. And, we and I really like that video. So we click on thank that you when you your get continue. the slides sent to you. Another way that you can genuinely thank donors after they make the donation is to let them know what their support goes towards. So the water project. Um, has a feature on their donor confirmation page that answers the question, you know, what happens next? Now that I gave 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, what happens next? And it leads to a beautifully designed graphic describing the path of the donation. So, you know, I think this page is incredibly powerful, but it could be even more powerful if it featured a video. Uh, or photos with a personal story of a person maybe who's benefited from the work of the water project. But I do still think that it's incredibly powerful. Um, this is a, an example from Brittany's Hope Foundation and it's really personalized. So in addition to the personalized thank you email and thank you letter that hopefully all of your donors will get, could you personalize your thank you redirect page. So using GiveGab, I mean, there's a lot of other ways that you can do this, but if you, if there's a way that you could pull in the name or you could at least say, thank you for donating to this particular campaign, I think that would work really well. Personalization, as specific as you can be, telling them about the project, showing the impact of the donations, that is exactly what donors want. And that's, what's going to keep them coming back and telling their friends about your organization. Okay, so we talked about crowdfunding and social fundraising a little bit, and now we then we talked about adding the donate button and how to optimize the donor experience from start to finish, because that's hugely important. Now I'm gonna show you the elements of an effective online donation page. So this is going to be where people are going to actually make the donation. Um, and this is what they're gonna see when they walk through. Um, so what really works in terms of a donation page that converts, we always say the word conversion, where people actually are going there and then not just going there, but actually making the donation. Branding, so everyone is secure and they know they're giving to you. Concise copy, concise copy, don't be too wordy. 
This is not a place to repost your entire strategic plan or your mission statement, concise copy, compelling visuals that are going to kind of grab my attention, specific donation amounts. If you can give examples of impact, but if not, that's totally fine too. Maybe you want to share examples of impact in a thank you email after they've given. Social sharing um, after the donation is processed. Make sure that it's mobile optimized. That's so, so, so important. And then the security is updated. Those are the elements that are going to drive more donations and get more people to feel comfortable kind of taking out their wallet and giving you a donation. So this is a great example of an online donation page. Change lives with your gift, donate now. And with GoFundMe Charity, the donate button, you can customize all of this. The headline, the text, monthly, one time, you can customize the amounts. And you can see that it's gonna grab your attention because of this great, great, great photo. Every day we help people in the poorest communities in the world survive and thrive. Your gift will help us continue. Concise and look, what I want you also to look at is the cleanliness of the page, right? There's not, you know, your Facebook feed on the right-hand side, your Twitter feed on the left-hand side. There's not a navigation bar at the top. It's very seamless because you want to eliminate all obstacles to giving. You want to eliminate all distractions. If you can be very specific as to what the donations are going to go to, that does generally work. I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think that it's a breaking point for donors, for a lot of donors, but they might continue upping their gift if they see, oh, I was going to give 20, but 40 will do this. So if there's a way for you to say, $50, you know, to help fund a counseling session, 150 help fund three counseling sessions. Now, why I wanted to bring up this particular page, I love it. I actually really like the photo. You can help a family like mine find hope and healing. It's a great um, example of storytelling with just a photo and a sentence. I think they start their donation amounts and they're a little high. I just don't see a lot of people going and giving $2,500 online. Like maybe you have had a different experience, but in my experience, those gifts are usually made at events or when a board member asked. Um, but you need to experiment, you know, maybe it's really working for this organization. You need to experiment and see what's gonna work for you. This is the Roadrunner Food Bank, you know, together we can solve hunger. Donation details, you know, how often would you like to donate, but you can see clean, clean, clean no distractions. Best Friends Animal Society. I love this. How your gift saves lives. So that's a great headline. How your gift saves lives. Because we have to remember that donors might be coming to the donate page hesitant, like a little hesitant. Maybe they say, okay, I, I'm inspired. I watched a video or I saw a Facebook post or I read something on the news and I Googled it and now I'm on your donate page, but I'm still a little bit hesitant seeing this photo and then reading this succinct and concise explanation, your contribution to best friends goes straight to work, helping tens of thousands of animals. You know, thank you for your generosity um, and gives lots of options. So that's really the key is that last barrier to pulling out that credit card. Maybe it's that photo, maybe it's that concise and really powerful emotional language. Maybe it's a little bit of a story. So we can't just assume that we're not doing any work. Once they click donate, we have them. We can't assume that. We still have to do a lot of work on the other end to not only entice them to fully make that donation, and then also in the cultivation process, the thanking, the acknowledgement process, encourage them to stay with us for the long haul and share it with their networks. Okay, so let me see. I just wanna see what questions have been coming in. Um, let's see, okay, this is a technical one. Can there be a $7.50 monthly recurring? I don't know that, Bart, so I will leave that to Malia. I don't know if you can customize it with, if it has to be rounded um, amounts. I actually don't know. You can have the same button 
Um, Mary Elizabeth, you can have the same button on multiple pages within the website. Absolutely. Because you have the code and you have the URL. So you can put it pretty much wherever you want on your website. Oh, Nadia has a good question. Is there a way to have the donor pay the fees along with their donation? Yes. So I believe that's an option that they have um, that they can click on, you know, I want to cover the fees and then someone, it will show you how much the fee is depending on, you know, if they're donating $20, the fee will be bigger if they're donating $10. Um, so definitely that is, that is an option that you can, that you can set up. And I, I want you to know, I always pick that. I always pick that. I always cover the fees also because I know I've worked in nonprofits for a long time, but I do think that most people would do that. Um, can you capture the person's name and email address if they do not complete donation transaction? No, no, because then they might be deciding they don't want to do it. So they have to actually complete the transaction um, within the donate form for you to capture their information. Okay, let's see. Whoa, there's lots of questions. Let me go up. So I'll check a couple of them. Um, oh, I like these questions are so good. Alyssa says, we plan to set the donate button on for a specific campaign. Many of our donors donate online, but we do receive checks in the mail from several donors. Is there any way to manually add the donations that we received offline? so that all donations can be reflected in our progress towards the goal. Yes. So when you set up a GoFundMe charity campaign on the back end in settings, you have the ability to manually add offline donations. So only the charity should be allowed to do that though. I wouldn't make it so that anybody that comes to your campaign can add offline donations because you're not, you know, I could pretend, oh, I'm going to give you $50 and then I never do. So set it so that only you, only the administrator of the campaign can add offline donations. But that is something that you can do on the GoFundMe charity campaign page. Um, okay, so this is done. Ooh, Erica, I don't know. Malia, you might know this one. Um, can we get them to sign up to our newsletter with a checkbox on the form? And will that sync with MailChimp or other? I, I don't know for sure, but I believe you would have to download the donor's information and then re-upload it into MailChimp. But I will check on that one, Erica. Um, there's no checkbox on the form, I know that, but I do think that you can download all of the donor's info into an Excel spreadsheet and then upload it into MailChimp. There is actually, we're working on a new webinar all about how to use MailChimp um, and you're going to get that information and how to sync things with MailChimp. So that would be a completely different webinar. Okay. But yes, the way I feel about it is, you know, in the United States right now, we don't have the restrictions where people have to check a box to sign up for our email newsletter. We can add donors to our email newsletter list. But what might be even a best practice is when they get the thank you email from you, just to confirm that they wanna stay on your list. Just have them click a link, have them click a box, have them click something where they say, yes, 100%, I wanna be on your email list. I think that's just kind of a best, a best practice. Okay, so we still have a little bit left to cover here. I wanted to talk about some ways that you can grow your supporter base um, and follow up with your brand new donors. So when you're running a GoFundMe charity campaign, you have the ability to use the campaign update tool, which is a way to communicate with your donors and with the people that are fundraising for you within the platform itself. So what I recommend doing is using this tool at strategic times so, you know, we're halfway to our goal. We're close to our goal. We're so thankful this great big gift came in. Any way that you can generate excitement, any way you can create that sense of urgency, maybe any photos that you have. If you can do a live video and put a video in your campaign, campaign update tool 
send this update out to everyone that donated because what's going to happen is they might make another donation, but they might not, but they still might tell other people about it. If you never talk to them, if you never communicate to them, you know, after they've made this original donation, they're going to wonder what the heck happened. Did they even reach their goal? If you have a stretch goal, a great place to announce the stretch goal. And of course, thank people for donating. You can even ask them to consider starting their own fundraiser on your behalf to really help you reach that goal. So some examples, let me see, we'll click on one of these, of how people have used the campaign update tool. So you'll see they have a great video here, but this is the story. So this is the main meet and the ask. This is what they're talking about. This is what they're, how they're gonna convey to you that you should participate in this campaign. But the updates, are, it's almost like a blog. It is like a blog. So there are updates, two new team up, six weeks remaining. Um, you know, help us spread the word. See the social share buttons are all at the bottom. Three new cities and hospitals, 22 tablets. So it's just giving you an update on the campaign. And then you can actually send this out to your donors and send it out to the people that are fundraising for you. And if people are fundraising for you, if they're doing teams, the teams will be listed here. And then of course that can get into great competition because um, people can see the leaderboard and they can see who else is fundraising and you could join a team. You could decide to join Sarah's team or Nora's team. So there's all of these fantastic tools available to you right on the homepage when someone decides to, to visit your campaign page. And you can customize all these buttons on the right-hand side to donate, join the team, um, and all of that. So it's a, really, it's a really great way, an underutilized way, to keep up excitement during the campaign, especially if it's a long one, especially if you're running it for a month or even over a month. People want to hear from you. They want to hear an update. They want to know what's going on, and they want to know, you know what is there still left to do, and how can we participate? I recommend sending a thank you email to every single donor within 24 hours. Um, you can send a creative thank you email that also doubles as a donation receipt. You can do this directly from GoFundMe charity. You can ask them to share your social media posts. You can send out a survey to get more information about them. Um, there's a million things that you can do. I think simple is best. I think the, the simpler, the better. But um, I do think communicating within 24 hours, sending a personalized thank you with some photos and a letter from your executive director, maybe your board chair, I think that's really effective. You can also create personalized video. So this is my friend Josh Hirsch, and he works for Susan G. Komen, Florida. He did a birthday fundraiser for himself, his own birthday, to raise money for them. And he used a tool called CauseVid. There's, there's a million tools you can use. And he embedded a video and you click on it. And it was a personalized thank you video to the donors of this particular campaign. And I have to tell you, I'd never received a personalized thank you video from a nonprofit. And I was blown away and it was amazing. And it was 10 seconds long. And he did have to make quite a few of them because there were quite a few donors but I think it was absolutely worth the time um, that it takes. I'm, I've included some sample thank you language that I really liked from organizations that I've donated to and thank yous that I've received. I like this one. It's very simple. You've changed a life. This is what you've done. Your ongoing contribution helps do X, Y, Z, you know, for your tax purposes. So this also, doubles as a tax receipt, but the tax receipt doesn't have to be boring. You can customize all of these communications, make them personal, make them count. If you're gonna get the attention of a donor, make it count, don't be boring. This is a great um, example of how to get supporter feedback. If you want to find out maybe how they found out about you, what they want to learn more about, what they're most passionate about, um, there's a lot of different ways to do that. 
survey monkey google form you could even just ask them a question and have them hit reply i think that building this two-way relationship with your donors yes it takes a lot more time but it's a lot more it's just a lot more effective and these donors are going to stay with you longer if they feel like they're being heard so this is kind of an analysis of a great thank you email this is kivy laroe miller um, that does an entire uh, marketing class on email marketing she's amazing but she says you know positive and personable great photo there's more to come so don't you know delete our emails when you get them helping us feel like we're there these are the results it's very personal you know reminder about connection also other activities so I've given you in the slides when you get them quite a few templates that you can use and you can actually write all of this and customize all of this right inside your campaign update tool and right inside your donor contact tool which is on the back end of your GoFundMe charity um, GoFundMe charity campaign when you're the administrator okay something that I get asked all the time what do we need to do before we can ask again so I recommend there's some people that recommend you know seven to ten different touches I don't necessarily think you need that I just think every donor just needs to know that they're now part of this work they're part of this community they are building something bigger than themselves they are you know you represent their worldview their ethics their values what they stand for you are walking the walk you're doing the work and showing people impact before asking again so you know sharing stories sharing photos just thanking people i just wanted to reach out and say thank you so much this is a quote um, without asking rosie's place i love the language they used here because of you norma got the support she needed to reclaim her dignity and rebuild her life watch her story thank you thank you thank you for allowing us to help women like norma so think about the language that you're using and to wrap up you'll also get a pdf of this quick start checklist so this is something that you could print out and just make sure you're kind of crossing your t's and dotting your i's you do need to you know sign into the account it's everything that we covered in the beginning so this is almost like a toolkit a checklist all of the slides will function like that for you to make sure that you are giving your donor the best experience possible because it's not about us it's really not about us of course we want them to make a donation but it's about the donor experience and if they have a great experience with you they will come back and they will tell their friends and they will continue to give when you nest nest next ask them if you don't have an account yet or you need to claim your charity, get started for free. You can go there today, charity.gofundme.com, and you can choose, set up the donate button, set up a campaign. You can do all of the above, but you can get started for free today. This is what you're going to see when you go there. Some key takeaways, um, and then we're going to get to some questions. Key takeaways for any successful crowdfunding campaign things that are very important to um, have in mind create your campaign with your key call to action so don't be wishy-washy don't you know beat around the bush definitely be active and have direct language asking people what they're giving to why this why now why is this important why is this urgent share the link with everyone in your network ask them to share the link post updates on what you're doing to really build up that excitement and then at the end of it use the results to learn and to do better next time and to improve okay we are at 12 46 or i am at least eastern time so we're going to take some questions if we do not get to your question um because i want to end you know right on the hour be respectful of people's time npo support at gofundme.com that's going to be your go-to place. Although I would recommend going to the GoFundMe Charity Help Center because it's amazing. Um, and you can type in literally anything like MailChimp 
and then it will say your MailChimp integrations um, and how to do that. So I'm just thinking we got a MailChimp question. So check out the amazing help center. Um, if you don't find what you're looking for, there is a contact us button. And then of course there's the NPO support email as well. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna start my video. We got a lot of questions. So let me see which ones I can answer. Um, let's see. And Malia, I would just, I'm leaving it to you to correct me if I say something wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, sounds good. <laughs> so with this one, what type of reporting do we get on donors, especially those that selected anonymous? I want to say you're going to get the name you know, you're going to get the name, the email, maybe the contact information, and then the amount they donated. Do you get anything else? So I'm actually testing this right now. Um, usually for campaigns, yes. Like even if a, a donor donates anonymously, um, organizations will still receive first and last name, email, billing address. Um, but for a donate button, it's a little bit different since that information isn't isn't actually being displayed publicly anywhere. Um, we have a little note that like, if you do choose to have your donation anonymous, then um, organizations won't receive that information. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm actually double checking this right now. And so I'm gonna confirm this in a couple minutes. <laughs> okay. All right, this one. Can you have multiple GoFundMe pages for different campaigns? Um, I think you can, I think you can, but they have to be tied to the same EIN charity, right? Am I right on yeah. that, Malia? Okay. Um, yeah, I think maybe there have been a lot of questions around um, donate buttons being connected to campaigns. And so I'm not sure if this question is getting that exactly, but just to clarify um, for everyone, because there were so many questions around this. Um, the donate button is a direct to charity button. So all of that money will go directly to your charity and won't actually be connected to any campaign that you have. Um, that said, we do have a technical workaround. And so if you do want your donate button to be connected to your campaign, I would just recommend reaching out to our support team at NPO support at GoFundMe.com just so we can help you set that up um, because yeah it, it is a it is a workaround and it's not super intuitive so it is possible but naturally the donate button is not connected to any campaign okay that's really good to know that's good to know i need to do a slide about that okay um this is probably one for you malia because i haven't seen this does gofundme charity have at um, applications for processing credit cards at an event like PayPal has a plug-in for the phone that will run the credit card strip no we don't have this um, but you could just the send them to the page on their yeah. phone yes um, but we don't have anything like like stripe no yeah exactly okay Alrighty. Yeah. I would just send them to the page to give them the URL, send them there and it's all mobile optimized. So they should be able to make a donation, you know, pretty easily at the event, but yeah, it's definitely, um, it's just a, one more step, but I, th I think it's fine. All right. Is there a monthly report available for our accounting and audit purposes? Um, yes. I think it depends what you're looking for, but there, there's a really robust, like from what I've seen on the back end, there's a really robust reporting function that you can use. Yes, confirmed. Okay. And customized too. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. Oh, we have a PayPal button. Should we add the new one or get rid of PayPal? Well, okay, to me, <laughs> I think pick one or the other. The problem I have with PayPal is that, first of all, a lot of people, I, they might seem very popular, but what I've seen, a lot of people don't trust PayPal. They don't like PayPal. I've had horrific experiences with PayPal. Um, so that's just, I would, I don't know. I think I would probably get rid of it and 
look, you know, just consolidate everything into one payment processor rather than having like 10 different things. Um, let me see. Oh, can we run different versions of this on different campaigns? I don't know what that means. Robert, do you mean run different versions of the donate button? But you definitely can run different campaigns as long as they're linked to your charity that you've claimed. You can run as many campaigns as you want. Um, oh. Oh, yes, June. Can I set up subscriptions, let people give $10 a month that we just charge to their credit card? Yes, that is available. Let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, man. There's a lot of questions here. When sending a thank you email within 24 hours of a donation, can that be an auto responder from GoFundMe? So this is actually, Malia, I did have this question. Does GoFundMe automatically send a donation receipt and can that be customized? Um, yes, it can, but you, it's not self-service at this time. And so if you did want that to be customized, then you'll just need to write into our support team and give us the language that you want and we can set that up for you on our end. So there, so um, this person's anonymous. So anonymous attendee, that's a great question. What I would recommend is letting GoFundMe send that, that tax receipt, but then going back in on the back end and writing that thank you or cutting and pasting it and then sending it out to a bunch of the donors maybe once a week um, or maybe every other day. So you can also export all of those emails into a spreadsheet and upload them into whatever email provider you use. And you can send the thank you emails out that way. But um, I just recommend using their tools to do it. So thank you email personalization. It takes a little bit more time, but it's really, really worth it. It's completely worth it. And you can cut and paste everything and just send out a bunch of emails at once. But thanking your donor personally with a story and a photo really works well. And I, I don't think you can get thanked too many times. And I don't think they would mind. Um, let's see. I, I, don't, I don't understand this question, but I think you might have answered it, Malia. Can this be customized for those of us who run multiple campaigns? I don't know what that, can what? Can the donate button be customized? The donate button, goes, I think she answered that question, goes to your charity. So it goes directly to your charity. It doesn't go to a campaign. But you can customize every single campaign that you run through GoFundMe Charity. So that is important, and that's my fault that I didn't clarify the distinction between a campaign on GoFundMe Charity, which is where you have the dedicated set amount where you have the thermometer showing how much you've raised, where you have the list of donors, where you have your updates. That's a campaign, but the donate button goes directly to your charity. And you can set it up, like she said, there's a little bit of a workaround, but I would contact GoFundMe to find out how to get that button that's gonna go to your campaign, if that makes sense. Okay, so I know that's a little yeah. technical and there's a lot of, um. <laughs> There are a lot of questions. Okay. Oh my goodness. If I don't claim my charity today, is it still free? When do I sign up? How long do I have before I set it up on our website? How long to set up or create a campaign? Yes. So you can claim your charity at any time, Ross, any time of day, 24 seven, go and claim your charity. It's going to always be free. There's no subscription fees. And how long do I have before I set it up on our website? You can set it, take as long as you want. You can take as long as you want. What I recommend doing is claiming your charity and looking at all the features and figuring out which one you want to use. And then you can play around and set up the donate button, but never even actually put it on your website. You know, you can play around with it. You can look at the preview. You can change the headline. You can change all this other great stuff on the back end. And it's not until you put the code 
onto your website that it will work. So I say just claim it, play around with it, take a look around at all the different features. There's no time limit on any of this. There's no time limit. Uh, Malia, is there a time limit though? This was a question I got the other day that I didn't know. Is there a time limit on how long you can run a campaign? No. Okay. It is active for however long you want. And um, there are settings on the actual campaign to disable the donate button, but it'll automatically be running for as long as you want. So there's never a point at which it'll, it will just disable on its own. Okay. Uh, where are we? Okay, 1257. I want to answer Jackie's question just because she's in Massachusetts. Okay, I have a charity team Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress for the Falmouth Road Race. Is there a report I can run weekly that shows all my runners and their donations? Yes, I believe you can run it, I mean, anytime you want. But you can definitely run it weekly to see, if you're talking about people that are teams that are raising money for you, just like I showed you in that one example, the people that are the teams, you can run that report and see all of the teams everyone that's participating and everyone that's donated. So let's see. Like I said, the reporting yeah. is really pretty cool. Um, okay. Oh yeah. The not allowed ticket sales. Um, let's see. PayPal. There's a lot of questions about PayPal integration and how the donations actually get sent to the bank. Um, Malia, I guess that depends on whether they choose PayPal or WePay. Could you just maybe talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So we offer two different payment processors. <clears throat> obviously it's a little confusing because we offer PayPal and then PayPal obviously offers their own thing, but, <clears throat> um, so PayPal giving fund, um, if your organization is enrolled with PayPal giving fund, you can set up um, your bank account to be connected so that donations will be sent to your bank account on a monthly basis. And then we also offer WePay, which can offer withdrawals a little bit faster. So they offer um, monthly, weekly, and daily withdrawals. Um, and so both options are available to all charities, regardless of what um, payment plan you're on as well. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Like I said, if you didn't get your question answered, go to the Charity Help Center, GoFundMe Charity. Email NPO support at GoFundMe.com. We have another webinar coming up. You're going to get an email about it. Please keep an eye on your spam and junk folder because last time a lot of you emailed me and said you didn't get the recording and then it was always in your junk folder. So make sure if you don't get it within 24 hours, that you just check your spam or junk folder. Otherwise, feel free to email us and, and we'll send it out to you. But you should get the recording, the slides, and even um, a transcript um, of the presentation and the PDF checklist. You'll get all of that great information. So thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much, Malia. As you could see, I'd be lost without you. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're a great team. And I look forward to doing more, more webinars. I hope a lot of you are signed up for the July 22nd webinar. You're going to get all of that information in an email. So I, I look forward to seeing you again. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.